shockwaves. So again, the only analysis we can do is with the integral form. Okay, and uh, uh, in order for us to analyze the shockwave in a very small time unit, let's think of zooming very much close into the shockwave. A shockwave in the mathematical terms here is a discontinuity, so it's infinitesimally thin. And uh, uh, the physical shockwaves, for, for example, the shockwaves you have on uh, when airplanes are traveling at transonic speeds, uh, uh, by the way, like even if you are flying in a regular airline, the, uh, there are shock waves. They, they are not supersonic, but uh, locally the flow is going to be supersonic uh, above the wing. So there are still shock waves. The shock waves like that has a thickness of basically a um, molecular scale. So, so it's on the same scale as the uh, mean free path of, uh, of molecules. It's uh, maybe one order of magnitude larger, but it's, it's very thin. So, so from a from the view, from the scale of the airplane, it's it's pretty much a uh, a discontinuity. So we'll zoom in into the shockwave, and if you have a shockwave like that, okay, as you zoom in into here, we'll we'll zoom in, magnify, we'll get something like this, right? So this is the zoomed in version, and then you further zoom in, you get the point. Uh, we further zoom in. Over here, we get basically something like this, right? So, so as the further you zoom in, it looks more like a discontinuity with constants, with one constant on the left side and another constant on the right hand side, right? The variations happens further from the shock wave can be uh, ignored when we do an analysis in the very microscopic sense, like look very, very much zoomed in into the shockwave. Okay, so in this case, let's say the value on the left-hand side of the shockwave is UL, the value on the right-hand side of the shockwave is UR. It's a true discontinuity. UL is not equal to UR. Uh, applying differential form, primitive form, uh, conservative form they all break down because the derivative of anything u or f or anything is going to be either zero or infinity it doesn't make any sense right so we only apply the conservative form uh, the, the integral form and let's apply the integral form over a control volume that surrounds this shockwave okay let's do a and b uh, integrated over here and uh, uh, let's actually apply an analysis that uh, where where uh, at time equal to zero, let's think of a uh, think of the location of the shockwave as s s of x of s, right? Because we know the shockwave moves around, x s is a function of t. So let's make our a and b to be fixed right in the in the conservative i mean in the integral form a and b has to be a fixed control volume i mean the control if the control volume moves around then the integral form has to be a lot more complicated so so let's uh, let's fix a and b and have s moving around so if that is the case how would uh, this behave how would uh, uh, what is going to be ddt of the integral uh, of u dx? Uh, how can you decompose this as, uh, how can you represent this as a function of all these terms we are looking at? Right? So u, ul may be also a function of t, ur may be also a function of t, right? We don't know. Okay. So, so let's actually analytically calculate. Let's don't look at time derivative yet. So let's analytically calculate what it is. So this can be, of course, decomposed into two parts, from A to XS and from XS to B, right? And because each part is a constant, we can pretty much just uh, write it out right away. So on the integral on the left-hand side is UL, which may be a function of T times xs minus a. And on the right hand side is ur times 
b minus xs. And remember, we are zooming in to the shockwave very, very much, so that both of these are going to be tiny numbers. Okay. So now, when we take the derivative, d dt of this volume integral, it can be written to several parts. One part is due to the movement of ul, so dul dt times xs minus a. Remember, xs minus a is tiny, 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 because we zoomed in. So this term is um, almost approximately equal to 0. The second term that is also almost approximately <coughs> equal to 0 is this. This is because b minus xs is also very, very small. The only term that is not going to be 0 is because of the movement of xs. Right? A is constant, b is constant, so they, they, can, they, they don't introduce any time derivatives. So uh, because of xs, we have dxs dt times positive here ul, negative here minus ur. This is the only term that, no matter how much you zoom in, is not going to become any smaller. Right? The first two terms, the more you zoom in, the, the closer A and B are to access, the, the smaller they are. So, so if we pick a very infinitesimally small uh, interval A, B, these are going to be gone. So D, dt of uh, the, the, the total conserved mass in the volume is just the magnitude of the discontinuity, ul minus ur, times the speed of the discontinuity. If the discontinuity is like that, left is higher, right is lower, then the time derivative is positive. We will get more stuff as the, mo as the shock moves towards the right, and less stuff when the shock moves towards the left. right? And vice versa, is if ul is lower, ur is higher, then shockwave moving towards the right would get me less stuff in the volume, and shockwave moving towards the left would get me more stuff in the volume. OK, so that's the physical meaning of this. And let's use this to analyze why the shock moves and which direction it moves in the case g is equal to 0. OK, so that is, uh, that is when when we have these uh, uh, burgers, when we have the burgers equation, we have a, a positive on the left, a uh, uh, negative on the right. We get, uh, uh, we, we, we'll, we'll see the shock wave uh, in a moment. So, uh, so in the burgers equation, well, let's look at for any general uh, finite uh, uh, conservation law. If g is equal to 0, the time derivative is equal to the flux on the left minus the flux on the right, right? This is equal to the flux on the left, right, which is the flux at a. And the u at a is equal to ul. That means this is the flux, the influx at a is f of ul minus the flux at b, because b is the, we are looking at the outward flux, minus f at b, the value is ur, so minus f of ur. All right. So this is what the equation looks like. This is how the application of the integral form of the conservation law into this very small control volume around the shockwave is going to give us. It's going to give us the movement speed of the shockwave times ul minus ur is equal to the difference between the flux at left and the right. So if we divide them out, <coughs> if we divide them out, what we get is dxs dt is equal to f of ul minus f of ur divided by ul minus ur. 